In our last segment, we talked about descriptions of the little horn of Daniel that were too vague to apply to any specific Roman emperor. Now we'll talk about Daniel's descriptions which can narrow the field down. The next descriptor we'll discuss says that the little horn will wear out the saints of God. The initial question is whether Daniel is talking about Jews or Christians, or maybe both. In his own day, Daniel would only have known of Jews, and if that was all he meant, then there was more than one emperor who might have qualified on some basis or another. On the other hand, if he meant just Christians, that field is even narrower. But you'll notice Vespasian and Titus. What's that? When did either of those guys wear out the Christians? Well, actually, they did it at the same time they tried to wear down the Jews, in 70 AD when they attacked Jerusalem. The clue to this is found in a paragraph attributed to the Roman historian Tacitus, which is lost from his work but was preserved for us by a later historian, Severus. Severus only names Titus, but at the time this was happening, Vespasian was the emperor. It would have been Vespasian who was assigned the ultimate responsibility for this attack. In turn, we have the explanation for this part of Daniel 7, which refers to a period of three and a half years. That's a good round off for how long it took from the time Jerusalem was attacked until the end of the Jewish war. That's how I see the wearing out of the saints. Now, what about changing the times and the laws? Well, there's some rather freakish attempts that have been made to connect that to things like changing the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. But we can forget all that. It's enough to view this as another generic expression. Every Roman emperor wanted to do this to some extent. It was part of their job as leaders. But let's now close out with the most compelling specific of all. In the life of Vespasian, we have events that match up well to this most specific description Daniel offers of the little horn. Let's go back to that list of emperors. As you can see, we have three who died in one year. Galba, Otho, and Vitellus. All of these, along with Vespasian, were military men who were vying for the emperorship. Galba and Vitellus were murdered by their troops. Otho was compelled to commit suicide. And that left Vespasian as the winner of the Roman Civil Wars. And there you have your little horn versus three horns. Now at this point I can hear certain funny critics making a big fuss. They'll say things like, hey the little horn physically uprooted the three horns. But you just admitted Vespasian had no direct role in getting rid of those guys, so that can't be him. Well, that's a case of forcing way too much literalism out of apocalyptic images. And the fundies aren't even consistent on that. Let me show you an example. Remember this guy? The bear who represents Media and Persia? Well, it's generally agreed that those three ribs represent three major conquests by the Media Persian Empire. Lydia, Babylon, and Egypt. But, wait a minute. Those three ribs are in the bear's mouth all at the same time. Media Persia didn't conquer all three of those at once. They conquered them one at a time. I'm being facetious here and making a point. Apocalyptic was like an ancient editorial cartoon. You were supposed to expect a certain level of illustrative liberty to make a point. Complaining that Vespasian didn't personally uproot each of those three little horns himself is like saying that this editorial cartoon doesn't match reality because the leaders of the Republican Party would never wear that kind of makeup. Chill out, guys. It's apocalyptic. There's more that could be said about Daniel from a preterist perspective, but for next time I'm going to switch gears and take up another key text, the Olivet Discourse. That one will be a long and fun ride, so be sure to tune in next time. <laughs>